Reality is a false realm, made up of illusions and misperceptions. It is nevertheless permeated with instants when time seems to lose count, and clarity emerges from in between the constructs and concepts that make up the realm we experience. These are miracles. To have a simpler sample, if we take a look at the two supposedly opposed extremes in Western theology, let's say, Judeo-Christian Islamic canonical beliefs on one side, and the material magic-based cults on the other, who usually call miracles by magic, we will be able to verify that neither of them promote the understanding of, and connection to, miracles that continuously invade, so to speak, the holographic nature of this perception-based realm, much like Plato's cave metaphor, in my opinion, as I've mentioned before on another contemplation. So the canonical religion side will embellish their proposed miracle description with such a Hollywood-esque touch, including special effects, drama and tension, that turn them into a subconscious impossibility. The material magic camp on their side will show miracles to be magic done properly, that is, in their view, magic that presents results in fulfilling the ego's desires. The issue with the canonical religion view is that it generates disbelief in miracles by promoting belief in reality impossibilities. The problem with the material magic view is that it promotes ego satiation as its measure, which then causes the ego to become inflated and therefore vulnerable to infestation by all kinds of mental construct entities that block out any other perception except what prolongs their parasitism. Of course, above the regular individual levels, these two are actually one single group of reality controllers, pretending opposition. But at the lower levels of these belief systems, we can find them processing blindness to what miracles actually are, and to how they manifest in reality when true. Let's look at an element of the mentalities they generate. So on one side there's the Creator God is perfect, and it is man that messes up its own design. This is the old world of canonical religion. On the other side, there's the creation is messed up, so it's up to man's science or magic to make it right. This is the new world of material magic, one we uh, are transferring to live in now. Given that we have been living through this transference from the old world to the new world par paradigm, which is actually a generation of a new god construct like a serpent that will shed an old skin for a brand new one, any wisdom-based philosophies have been guided collectively into the new age package by the material magic cults and promoted in a material evolutionary and scientific light. Improve your life became a sort of motto for the latter, as, a, as book upon book on ritual proposals for obtaining material results for satiation of ego desires, and I have already mentioned in a previous contemplation that my opinion is that it's not about denying or satisfying the ego in all its desires, but about linking it to its own truth essence through balance. Now, these material magic sects promoted the current scientism that is the rule by colleges of scientists who will dictate what reality is and what it isn't and what solutions work and do not work, exactly like priests did in the age before. If, before, a priest would present prayer rituals, for example, as the solution to an ailment, now the scientist will present medication or surgical mutilation rituals. Both cause and control the coupling of ailment-solution misperception. They need to maintain a grip on the direction of reality experience. So both are priesthoods. The old worshipped creation as it was. 
the new vie to generate the new creator god from the old through the application of science as a perceived yet illusory correction of the previous creator god's mistakes as if reality actually had any correction done to it this is something we need to be aware of and avoid in my opinion we are not here to correct anything in the world or reality we are here to realize and that is all no evolution no revolution just a reconnection true true religion from latin religare as i've said which means to reconnect with the essence of miracles so let's ask then what are miracles in this reality well miracles will Firstly, always and only use what is available in the reality and what is possible within the rules that regulate the constructs and concepts of the realm. So any miracle will always only manifest through perception on the part of the recipient of it by using only the elements already existing within the rules of reality, such as physics, for instance. Two individuals may witness the same event, and to one it is a miracle, while to the other it is nothing of note. A miracle will not have special effects or any special drama about them, but it will synchronize the positioning of events to either facilitate a result or transmit a message to the ego. Then miracles will always be perceived instantly even though they, due to the synchronization they require, will have been triggered and initiated previous to their perception in time. The miracle takes only one timeless instant to be realized, but it will still use the rules of time to perform the needed set piece that allows the conjunction of its elements. Let me clarify this with a parable that will serve well as an example. This is a parable I picked up several years ago and cannot really recall the source, so if someone identifies it, please let me know. The parable is as follows. A man is crossing the desert on foot and suddenly gets stuck in quicksand and starts sinking. Being a man of extreme faith, he prays to his God asking to be saved from such fate. Such is his faith in his deity that he finishes his plea and prayer and already thanks God, getting ready and awaiting the saving divine intervention. In the meantime, a man with a camel passes by and sees him in that predicament. He shouts, Hey, I'll help you! I'll throw a rope and my camel can pull you out of there! The other smiles and responds, Thank you for your kindness, sir, but that is not necessary. I have, prayed to, I have prayed to God, and He will save me from this. I am just waiting for His hand to come down from heaven and pick me up to safety. The camel rider shrugged and left. After a few minutes, the man eventually died, choked in the sand, while awaiting the divine intervention. He went to heaven and met his Maker. He kneeled before God and asked, My God! I have always been faithful and trusting in you. Why have you abandoned me to the quicksand after I prayed to you? God frowned and replied, Abandoned? I sent you the camel rider, didn't I? You refused him. What else did you expect me to do for you? Now this parable shows how the miracle could only manifest with elements already existing in reality, such as the camel and its rider, and how the manifestation of the miracle was instant in the perception, even though it required that its synchronization started long before. In the parable, the camel rider had to have left home days before his, uh, for his journey across the desert to then be able to meet the man stuck in the quicksand at the right time. So we could summarize that a miracle is manipulation of reality elements with foresight within time. This is only possible because it originates from timelessness truth, where everything that has happened and hasn't yet happened is already seen. 
It is a concept impossible to grasp with our linear minds, I know, a good part of the reason why truth is invisible to our ego's perception. So by inference, a true miracle originates from truth outside of time, and so will involve foresight without any influence on the paths of others, while the material magic will manipulate reality through attempts at controlling the paths of others, always resulting in an avalanche of uncontrolled variables. In the parable, the camel rider did not have his will controlled. He was just triggered to do what he was already going to do on his own path, in synchronization with the traveler's hour of need. This said, miracles then obviously need attention and also no expectation on the part of the receiver. The traveler, the traveler in the parable avoided the miracle and died because he expected it to manifest in a particular way and so didn't realize that the miracle was right there and then, in the form of that camel rider crossing the desert near his location at that time. So, I say, practice attentiveness, without expectation nor denial of circumstance, as they may blind you to the miracle that is already there, always, beyond time and space, beyond fantasy and illusion, watching you, looking out for you, waiting for you.